A mass grave with the remains of 34 Ethiopian Christians has been found near the Libyan city of Sirte. They are believed to have been killed by the Islamic State in the area which the terror group once gained power since the collapse of Libya. The murderers are believed to date back to 2015. According to reports, the Christians in Libya were looking for work as migrant workers. For more, we turn to investigative journalist Ben Swan. Thanks for joining me, Ben. It's Cuddy. Very sensitive issue and for a lot of reasons, but what do we know about the victims and those that murdered them? Well, what we know is that there were 34 Ethiopian workers who had traveled to Libya to find work. Uh, they at some point disappeared along the way. Uh, and then they showed up in a video that was posted by ISIS in 2015. And in that video, uh, they had these men standing on a beach. A lot of folks will remember this video. It was very famous. Uh, their hands behind their backs. Uh, one of the men was shot and the others beheaded. And then we didn't know what happened to them. In fact, at the time, there were some claims coming from Washington uh, that perhaps this was in, wasn't even a real video and perhaps it was doctored footage and it was fake. And I don't know if you remember, they even claimed maybe it was on a green screen someplace and that this wasn't, wasn't really happening. Unfortunately, it, it absolutely was happening. We know that these men have now been found, their bodies, as you said, in that mass grave. Is it simple just to say that they were just workers and they were just randomly chosen or do you think that are we finding out that they were targeted for some other reason? Well, we, we know that they were Coptic Christians, um, and obviously the Coptics come out of Egypt specifically, uh, but, but these men were Christians who came there. And we also know this. We know that ISIS, throughout their movement in Egypt, in Libya, in Syria, in Iraq, has specifically targeted Christians. You know, Scotty, one of the most shocking and, and utterly... Um, it, it's, it's not just shocking. It, it's, it goes far beyond that. This... this stunning thing that's taken place as as evangelicals in America have pushed for war in the Middle East. We've seen groups like ISIS that have actually obliterated Christianity in that part of the world, the oldest place in the world for Christianity. And so we've seen that happen over and over. And this is one of those instances where, yes, it looks like they were targeted specifically because of their faith. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because also over the weekend in Egypt, we saw a police officer was killed trying to dismantle an explosive device outside of a Coptic church in Egypt. Um, the country's leader since 2014, LCC, has said that he wants to protect these Christians against extremists, but foreign governments uh, aren't really doing anything, as you said. Now, we're going to talk about the evangelical Christians here in America, but are foreign governments really doing what they should be right now to, produce, to protect these minority religious groups within their countries? You know, I, I think in many cases they're not. You know, in Egypt, the Coptics, obviously, one of the oldest expressions of Christianity uh, anywhere in the world. They have been long persecuted in Egypt. Under Mubarak, they were allowed to exist, though, fairly safely. Um, it, it, I think you could argue that they, they've never been... Uh, necessarily a protected class, as we would refer to it here in the U.S., but it's a very different story when you think about the Christians in Syria. The Christians who had been in Syria actually had been protected for a very long time by the Assad regime. Uh, Bashar al-Assad, who of course is the president right now, and his father, both of the Assads had actually protected Christians pretty well in Syria. And once we saw everything take place that has taken place in Syria over the last what, six, six years now, um, we've actually seen, as I said, the obliteration of Christianity in that country and also in Iraq. There were about five million Christians living in Iraq under Saddam Hussein, and most of them are gone today, and they were protected by Hussein. You know, it's interesting that you do bring that up, because I don't think a lot of people in America understand exactly in Syria the roles that they play. And it brings up the idea that right now more than 3,000 Christians just last year alone were killed worldwide. And according to a study last year and from Georgetown University Religious Freedom Program, they said that Christianity is the leading community being targeted for their faith. Far-fetched. Here in America, every church, every corner, and possibly twice on most corners in the South, there is a church. So where is the outcry here within the evangelical, the Christian community, the Catholic community for their brothers, sisters, and around the world? Why aren't they getting involved in, in, in getting more involved in this kind of foreign policy to protect those of the same faith? So I really believe that it comes down to a messaging issue. And I think that, you know, your last guest talking about the, the military industrial complex. I think the military industrial complex has done an amazing job of, of keeping this part of the story silent. 
if, if Christians in America, who really are, I, I would say, and you'd probably agree, uh, the largest vocal group for advocating foreign war in this country, um, th they've been so ready to see us go into the Middle East and, and to see war take place in these countries. I, I believe it's out of ignorance. They have no idea that what's actually the end result of these conflicts, the end result of regime change in Egypt, in Libya, in Syria, in Iraq, is the extinction of Christianity. You know, in, in Syria, the, the, the Christian movement there is literally the oldest in the world. It is the first place where Christianity, after it left Jerusalem, it went to Antioch, which was in Syria. And, and it's over 2,000 years old there, and it's almost completely gone. And this has been the product of U.S. foreign policy. I think if Christians in America realized what was happening, they would take a step back. But the, the messaging has been so good to silence that information that many of them just don't know. Well, thank you, Ben, for all of your work in getting that messaging out. And we will continue to shed light on the subject here. Uh, with any religious group that is targeted and put in genocide like has happened, what we've seen in the Middle East. Thank you. Thanks. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.